glad to introduce you Max Kessner with his uh, film Life and Other Problems. So, hi Max. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. You are he here in Yihlava. Mm -hmm. um, so, how you feel? Here. I feel fine. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for your film. I think it's very mm. important. Okay. Um, so, maybe you can tell us, an audience, uh, how you uh, started, what was the first click and mm -hmm. how you start with project. Mm -hmm. I, I know it started with the giraffe, but I guess you could say that that's just material, it's not really a story. Someone have to decide how to look at the, this case or this material. And when I looked at it, what came into my consciousness were thoughts about what is life, what do we actually know about it, how do we value it. And I have a feeling that there are things that, uh, that I didn't really understand and I would like to understand more about. So I, that's, that's why the story went that way. What was your first steps in this case? I, I knew that this was a film that you could call a film about science and I know that, that there's a tradition and I had to find a way to make it my own so, so that it's a personal work, a piece of art you could say. Yeah, and how, sure. I was wondering how do I do that, how can I make these characters in the film characters so that they are not just opinions or statements but they actually become humans or whatever we call it characters in a film. How is your opinion about life and life of people and animals if we are somehow connected or we are animals? How you how you think about it? I have a feeling that some of the problems we are facing, the reason why we cannot clean up the mess that we are doing is because we don't really understand how we belong in this world. What are our place? How are we connected to all the other living beings like trees and plants and animals around us? And we feel that we're not really an animal, but we are just, or, or not just, we are an amazing animal like all the other ones. And I think it's, for me, it's important to remember that sometimes. And because of that, I thought maybe it's also important for other people to remember that once in a while. So I guess the, one of the aim of the film is to to discuss this, how are we connected, in, in what way, and, and to realize again and again maybe that we, we have the same ancestors, we are coming from the same origin, all of us, the plants and the humans and the monkeys, and we all have the same ancestors. So of course we are connected, and we are connected in many ways, also locally in this world, in, in this moment. That's important for me. And it's another thing that was important for me was to discuss whether the, the actions of my life, what I do, what I choose to do and not to do, does it matter somehow? Or, or of course it matters, but am I in charge of this or am I not? Because if we discuss life, for me, the free will is part of the understanding of life. And it, it seems like when you look into that discussions that even the single cell in my body has a free will and can choose tomorrow not to do what it was supposed to do in order for me to be who I am. So I think that if this single cell in my body, and there's quite a lot of them, if they, all of those cells can choose what they want to do and what they don't want to do, I, I think it's a good argument for me having a free will also. And I think it's important to have this feeling of what I do is something I choose and I can change this world and or we can change it together. I made this film because I'm I'm more than halfway through my life and I made a, another film 20 years ago when I was younger that had the kind of the same investigation within it and at that time I also talked to signs you could say and I was satisfied with the answer that life is just a, a long line of coincidences. But now that I'm older and I have had children and uh, my grandparents died and all this life is happening, 
then I was not satisfied with, with the coincidences. I, I felt that there must be more. And what reason is it that, why is it that there is life on the, this planet? Does it have some kind of reason? That was what I was curious about. And that is, I think I found that, but then you have to see the film, of course, to, <laughs> to get yeah. that. <laughs> yes. So what was the hardest thing um, during the process for you? The structure of the film is, is, you could say, quite complex and was invented mostly in the editing room. And in the beginning, I think we were editing th towards an idea of this character, main character, being me trying to be more and more clever. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I learn something, we need to move to another room and another room. And then finally, I understand everything or at least something. But in, in reality, we realized that that was not really possible because I never really learned anything that was so concrete that it could move me to somebody else. Yeah. So it, the real thing that happens in front of the camera is sometimes what you have to follow. And in this case, it was just my curiosity or my intuition driving me from one character to another around the globe. So we had to follow that uh, truth, you could say. And that is why I'm part of this film, not just like an interviewer, but I had to move myself into the film in order to allow the film to be w without real reason. Because you could say human beings are unpredictable in so many ways. So if you put a human inside the film driving it, the film itself can also be unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm in there. And that was uh, something we realized in the editing room more and more at a certain point. I just went in there and brought my children and everything in to yeah. make, otherwise we couldn't make sense of it. Yeah. It's um, amazing how you, how you done this film. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, please watch the film. <laughs>